give myself away so you can use me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away yeah
our great Lord. And that is why we surrender our hearts to you, our Lord. Hallelujah. You are great, O God. You are great. Just acknowledge the greatness of God. Where you are, just acknowledge Him as a great God. As we head into this week, this coming week of election, just acknowledge the greatness of God. Acknowledge the greatness of God. Surrender your anxieties to the Lord. Surrender all your anxieties to the Lord. Cast your cares upon the Lord.
you are great Lord. Facebook, all of you joining us by way of the Zoom facility, we are grateful. We are grateful. And you know why we are grateful? Because an increasing company of multiplying disciples of Christ is taking shape on the earth. And you are a part of that number. I want to speak to us on the subject that I mentioned earlier on, and you will see it going through the bottom of your screen. We are talking about knowing Christ as we ought to. Knowing Christ as we ought to. You will all agree with me, beloved of God, that uh, it's possible for people to claim, for one to claim that he or she knows another, but there are aspects and there are ways that are qualifiers. Qualifiers in the sense of others know the person that you claim to know better than you do. And God's desire and commitment to each one of us is that we may know his son as we ought to. 
you know uh, it, to the religious mind and the educated mind as well as the proud mind it is extremely difficult to fathom that God's word says this Jesus is the true God and eternal life. It's easier for the educated, advanced, civilized, modern mind to imagine that there exists a way other than a person to be able to walk into eternal life. But saints, it can never be by the invention of man. It can never ever be by the invention of what man can do. What religion can get. It doesn't matter how you appear to know things. The truth of the matter is this. If we do not know Christ as we ought to know him, the beloved of God, then our lives will always fall short. See, all of us know for example, Ferdinand Omanyala. All of us know, for example, Eliud Kipchoge. But if we are probed further and subjected to a scrutiny as to the extent to which we know these two precious countrymen of Kenya, we will fall short where, for example, the wife of the wives of those, these two gentlemen you know, rice, or the relatives, or the people who are close by them, or their coaches, or their agents, or whoever else it may be that is within their inner circles. And so, tonight, beloved of God, I am speaking deliberately with a commitment to emphasizing the reality that knowing Christ in itself is a basis of peace. Knowing Christ in itself is a basis of rest. Knowing Christ in itself is a fountain hand, head of contentment. In other words, you come to a place where your life is satisfied just to know him. Jesus said, you know, to Philip, Philip, you have been with me for this long time and you are asking me to show you the father and it will satisfy you he says to him he that has seen me has already seen the father I want you to see when we encounter Christ we automatically encounter our heavenly father as well and the Holy Spirit is in the business in the church of Jesus Christ of revealing Christ Revealing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To the scriptures now. To the scriptures. And I'll read from 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Holy Scriptures. And I'm reading from verse number 14. All the way to the end. God's word has this to say. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. So in other words, this Christ is representative for all of us. He is representative. He is a substitute enough for every human being. And in his dying, there is a testimony. Were effectively under the spiritual death that attended humanity when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden. Remember, God's word says, God speaking unto them, On the day that you shall eat of the forbidden fruit, on that day you shall die. The truth of the matter is that they did not die physically because they continued to live to the extent of an angel being sent to ensure that he blocked the way to the tree of life. Because we can only access the tree of life 
on the basis of a faithful walk with Christ. It cannot be any other way. Verse number 15, and that he died for all. Okay? All were dead, but thanks be to God. Even though all were dead, verse 15 says that he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Notice, beloved of God, a Christ-centered approach to life and ministry. A gospel-centered approach, if you will. The gospel of Christ Jesus, when we respond to it, it becomes the basis of our life. So not only were all dead, but thanks be to God, he died for all. All having been dead, he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. In other words, those who have been resurrected by the resurrection of the gospel call. In Christ the resurrection and the life. They which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. But unto him which died for them and rose again. Saints, I am finding liberty such as I've never known it. In just giving myself to declare what God's word says and to leave it there. Because in the world of fallen men, in the world of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, with all its comparative allure and the things that it promises. If you remember Eve, the Bible says when she looked at it, she thought it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired, desirable to make one wise. And you know, she thought she would be like God, yet God had already made her like him because he made humanity in his own image after his own likeness. But she wanted to do it in her own terms, not in the terms of God. And even ourselves, beloved of God, we find ourselves time after time again under this temptation of trying to do the sensation, the exciting, the attractive, the thing that really makes for what is in vogue in society currently. And it's possible for you to keep the crowds by pursuing that way. But I want you to know God's will has never been that we pursue the crowd. God's will has always been that we pursue the cloud. His presence. His, our fellowship, our relationship with him. So the Bible says, verse number 16, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. And that's where my message is anchored. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. In other words, it's easy and it's possible for us by the veil of the flesh to see Jesus in the sense of his humanity on this earth and miss his significance in coming to this earth and miss the significance of his present greatness, his present glory and his soon return, his imminent return for the church to be glorified in all his saints and in all those who look up to him. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. In other words, we do not elevate any human being on the basis of their status, on the basis of their birth, on the basis of their economic scale or level, or level of education. Whether they are poor or they are not, we do not henceforth know any man in that manner. We who are in Christ, we have an eye for seeing every human being for who they really are. Lost or found. Lost, therefore in need of a savior. Found, therefore in need of walking consistently with the savior. Yet though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. 
And then he says the scripture that we like quoting, powerful scripture there, verse number 17. Therefore, even a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, how easy it is for us to miss the beauty, the glory, the treasures, the riches of God's word. By choosing ways and means other than this. That all we need, beloved of God, is to be in Christ. To be found in Christ. That to be found in Christ presently is to be found in Christ for eternity. That today's faithfulness is a predictor of tomorrow's faithfulness. That if you are not faithful today, we have no basis to trust that you will be faithful tomorrow. If any man is in Christ presently, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things about you. Beloved of God, do not try to excite the world. The Lord is calling you to an exciting new calling. Not just to a state of things that is permanent in the sense of everything has become new. So that now you actually settle in the new as an event. No, this new is like a revelatory adventure. Where every single day of your life, God has graciously opened the doorway of a revelatory adventure of knowing Christ from glory to glory. From grace to grace. If any man be in Christ. Remember we started by saying. If he died. He died for all. Then we are all dead. But if he rose again. He rose again for all. If he died. He died for all. So that those who live. May no more live unto themselves. But unto Jesus Christ. And therefore he says. We do not know any man after the flesh. In the light of the fact. That our identity is to be found in Christ. The church's identity is to be found in these two words, beloved of God. In Christ. Wherefore, even a man, therefore, even a man rather, be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What does that tell me, beloved of God? That indeed, when I live this kind of a life. I come to a place where the most exciting screen for me is the screen where Christ is manifested in his greatness. That the greatest screen that holds me and takes my sway, holds me in sway and sways me so that I can continually fall in love with the plan of God. The greatest screen is the screen of Christ revealed. Christ in me, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that he may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. But I want to emphasize also the idea of new. New means it has not been there before. And if any man is in Christ, beloved of God, you do not and you will not be able to explain yourself to the world. That does not mean that you are not in a position to give an answer or a reason for the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. But to be able to do it in the flesh will always be a means to frustration. The Bible declares clearly that even a man is in Christ. He is a new creation. What does that mean? That every day of our lives, by the grace of God, we are, even though men think we are scandalous, because of our different standards. Not standards by imitation. But standards by identity. Standards by having been adopted. Into this worthy name. Jesus Christ. If any man is in Christ. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold all things are become new. 
what the issue that I'm emphasizing here, beloved of God, is that we do not, we do not want to know any man after the flesh because that limits our ministry. When we know a person on account of how much they do not have or how much they do have, we will always have a comparative ministry in relation to different ones of us. But when our desire is genuinely to ensure that every believer is found in Christ and they are continually growing in the grace and the character of multiplying disciples of Christ for all nations, then what we become, beloved of God, is a company of radical saints who are found in Christ, the anointed one. Yokes are destroyed in that environment. Character is developed in that environment. There is a constantly unfolding newness in that environment. And every day of our lives, we become a people who are manifesting newness on the inside. Although we might be growing older on the outside. And all things are of God. All things have become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You know what that means? If there is a word for rest, it is right here. Beloved of God, the Lord is telling you, even if it's not in your hands, all things are of God. All things are of God. And when you are in God, you should be a satisfied believer because all things are of your heavenly Father. In Christ Jesus. All things are of God. Anything admirable. Anything desirable. Anything that you need for life and godliness. Anything enabling you as a new creation in Christ Jesus. To have no longer the old passions. But to walk in the new passions that lead. The new passion rather that leads to transformation. That kind of a life has been provided for adequately by the God to whom are all things. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. You see, to be found in Christ is to cease enmity with God. To be found in Christ, I repeat, is to cease enmity with God. You are no longer at loggerheads or at war with the holy, eternal God. But you are reconciled. Reconciled to himself by Jesus Christ. Oh yes, and he not only reconciled us to God, our Lord Jesus Christ. But he has also gone ahead to give us the ministry of reconciliation. To be able to reach out unto others and to tell them, see the glorious beauty and blessing. Of being found in Christ. Earlier this morning. I was remembering songs we sang many years ago. I have not heard them in a long while. They were simply choruses. That may not mean much. To the modern culture. Of our day. Master go with me. Master go with me. Master go with me until I see your face. Even, it means, even if it means to suffer. Even if it means no friend. Master, go with me. And saints, I want you to know. Until Christ becomes the bridegroom. Who preoccupies the mind and the passion of the bride. Until that becomes a living, ever consuming reality. We are not able to represent Christ as we ought to in this world. And that's why we find ourselves, beloved of God, elevating people on the basis of status and lowering people on the basis of status and measuring people among people on the basis of status. But if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. You and I should be discoverers of continuing newness that is daily unfolding until 
Christ brings us to the consummation where all of us shall be like him in the light of his appearing and his kingdom. All things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. I have made a commitment, beloved of God, that I will not just be speaking on topical issues, topical sermons, exciting ways on how to do this and the other, and those have their place. But when we lose that, we can easily cease to be the church Jesus died for. We can easily cease to be the church that Jesus Christ went to the cross for and died for and enabled to become a new creation in him. He has given us a ministry of reconciliation to wit or meaning that God was in Christ. God was in Christ. All along, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So guess what? We do not just have the ministry of reconciliation. We also have the word of reconciliation. God forbade that we would be a church that markets ourselves on the basis of anything that are other than Christ-centered, word-centered, Bible-centered approach to life and ministry. He has given committed unto us the word of reconciliation listen the ministry is given the word is committed committed here is a, an investment term he is saying I want to see profit arising out of the commitment I have committed something to your trust and in your ministry of reconciliation you cannot do it by sophisticated speaking mannerisms you cannot do it by way of trying to exhib, you know, to embrace exhibitionism, things to excite and to tickle the world and to excite the world. But you can only be able to do it as you open the holy scriptures that alone are able to make you wise unto salvation. Unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, who are we? ambassadors for Christ we are ambassadors for Christ we are delegates if you will of Christ when a president or a king or a minister or a mother or a father or a principal or a teacher whoever it is sends another in their name those people receive that one who is sent in their name as that person who sent that person are you with me beloved of God and that's the way, beloved of God, that when you are an ambassador of Christ, you're actually a representative of Christ. You actually stand for the values of Christ. You stand in the authority of Christ. You stand in the glory and the greatness of Christ. And though you may have tribulations in the world, the Lord did not promise a tribulation-free world. He says, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world now then we are ambassadors for Christ in other words we speak for heaven we speak for Christ we represent Christ Christ against philosophies Christ in the face of cultures Christ in the face of sin Christ in the face of rebellion in our marriages and our families and our children and our spouses Christ in the face of rioting, rioters living in our society. Christ, Christ, Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. While I was preaching, beloved, I just discovered that in these verses, Jesus Christ or Christ or in Christ is coming over and over and over again. I hadn't noticed that until now. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God besought us, you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to who? To God. And I close with this. For he has made him to be sin for us. 
who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He has made him, that Christ, to be seen for us who knew no sin. Who? That Christ. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In him who? That Christ. Beloved, there is an emphasis here that to know Christ is to have the ministry of reconciliation. To know Christ is to have the word of reconciliation. To know Christ and to be in Christ is to know the God who was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. And he has given to us the word of reconciliation. To know Christ is to be an ambassador on this earth where your values are not informed by your context, but they are informed by your position in relation to Christ. If you are in Christ, your values will be such as Christ extols and manifests in the lives of those who submit to him. If you are outside of Christ, it doesn't matter how beautiful your religion is, you cannot be able to honor God in any meaningful and lasting way. Finally, my brethren, I beseech you in the name that's above every other name, may we be like the writer of this epistle. He wrote the first epistle to the same people and the second epistle, part of which we have read today, to the same group of people. And he was writing to a city in its day, in its day, in its time and age, Corinth, which was a thriving commercial center, but also a religious hub that had a lot of dedication to idols, including idols of fertility. Our people have a way of exalting and exalting the goddess of fertility. That was the place where the apostle Paul thought, here I will plant a church, and I will not plant it in the persuasive words of men's wisdom, but I'll plant it in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that the faith of those who hear me shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Almighty God. I pray tonight as I close, beloved of God, even as I've been told, Sour, I want you to know that as we close this particular opportunity, I just want to encourage you that our lives can be different. Our lives, beloved, can be different. Our lives, beloved, can be different. Those eight of you joining me by way of Facebook and many others, and those of you eight joining me by way of uh, Zoom, I want you to know I come to you in no other way, in all, with no other allure, with all, no other influence except to remind you that Christ is our all in all. And when all has been said and done, we want to build a work that shall be celebrated into eternity because it had present relevance for Christ on this earth. So let's pray together. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. You are faithful, Abba Father. We give you the glory and the honor. Yes, pray for yourself. You have heard a word that you can respond to for sure. And wherever you are behind the screen, I want you to know God has called us to know Jesus Christ. Not in the man the world teaches us. Not in the man religion teaches us. Not in the man that carnality teaches us. But in the man that only the revelation of the Father, the revelation of the Holy Spirit, our interaction in utter dependence upon the Holy Spirit with the word of the living God can make known unto us knowing Christ as we ought to know him. Like the Apostle Paul that we can cry, Oh God, 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. This is the Christ who can wash away your body literally, wash it away and rid it of cancer and fatigue and infirmity, but who also in the midst of your trials and tribulations and pains can sustain and uphold you and strengthen you. This is that Christ who meets you in the crisis of your life and tells you, you matter to God. Let's love on him, let's love on him. Let's delight ourselves in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing, we sing glory, honor. joining by means of Zoom and minister to us and help us 
to experience the glorious radical shift in the spirit that is made possible by the present ministry of Christ Jesus whom we know not after the flesh but after the spirit after the living reality of your revelation and his unfolding greatness we bless you Lord we honor you our needs are under your hand under your feet and every one of them is met and exceeded to the glory of your name our bodies are healed whether they like it or they don't we are whole we are blessed and we are provided for we are made every week and dear Lord my God everyone who leads us to this message beyond this event Lord we pray that you would speak to their hearts to the end that they may know and appreciate and receive Jesus Christ yes. as their Lord and their Savior thank you, we thank you and we honor you yes, Lord. in Jesus name we have prayed with thanksgiving and believed amen, amen and amen, amen. Amen. I, I just want to appreciate you precious people. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Thanks, Dama. Thanks, Winnie. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Pastor Zipora. Thank you, Stella. God bless you all. We appreciate you so, so very much. Jackie, too. Yes, indeed.